Hello, and welcome to another one of our videos. We are Jehu Security, and my name is Andrew. Today, we will be walking you through how to install and set up the Signal Messaging app. Once we're finished with the install and basic functions, we'll cover a few neat features offered by the app, and finally, we'll wrap it up with a review of some key settings. If this is your second or third time watching the video, or you're only interested in one part, we have added chapters to make it easier to navigate. As a disclaimer, we are using Apple iOS for this tutorial. However, the process is almost exactly the same on Android devices. One noticeable difference is how the app permissions appear. First, Navigate to where you buy apps on your device. This would be the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. From here, search for Signal. You may need to scroll to find the correct app, but typically it'll be the first option available. It's always a good security practice to double check the developer and make sure it's the one you expect for any particular app. In this case, it is Signal Messenger LLC, so we know this app is safe to download go ahead and click Get or Install. Once the app is installed, find it on your device. Now we can begin setting it up for use. The first time you open the app, you will see this welcome screen. It is a good practice to view these terms of services for any app. Of most interest is how they handle your data in relation to third parties. Clicking Continue brings us to the first prompt for permissions. On Android, these will typically be presented all at once on one screen. On iOS, these will be prompted as each device asset is requested, which is how we'll see them presented here. The first prompt is to allow Signal to access your contacts. For nearly everyone, the best choice is to accept this by clicking OK. This will make it easier to find your contacts who already have Signal installed and are associated with the number you have for them in your contacts. We would note here that Signal acquires your contacts privately and does not transmit these to their server, so they never leave your phone and are not reported to Signal. The next prompt is for notifications. Since this allows us to know when we receive a message, we will click OK to accept. Now Signal is asking for our phone number. You can enter almost any phone number that is able to receive a text message. You will then receive a text message with a six digit code that you will need to enter in the next step. As a disclaimer, the phone numbers used in this demonstration were only for this demonstration and were then deactivated. They are no longer associated with Jehu security or any account. Enter your code and once all six digits are typed in, the app automatically moves to the next step. Here, Signal will ask for your first and last name. Note that only the first name is required, and this can be any entry you would like. It does not have to be your real name, although this is what other contacts will see you when messaging you. Next, you will be prompted to enter a PIN. This PIN can either be four or more numbers, or you can click the blue text to switch to alphanumeric. In the alphanumeric option, this can be only text, only numbers again, or a combination of both. We recommend that you select a long entry and store it safely. The ideal place would be in a password manager. This pin is used in part for encryption and when you want to move the account to a new or different device. Once the pin is set, the next prompt on iOS will be for access to find and connect to other devices on your network. The purpose of this is to enable the app to be able to transfer all message content to a new device. Without this, when you transfer your account, it will move everything but not the old messages and media, such as pictures or videos. Choosing to allow or not allow is based largely on personal choice. If you frequently change devices and want to save all historic messages, then click OK. If you are not overly concerned with saving older messages when you change devices or have a more complex threat model to defend, then select Don't Allow. There is no difference in the daily usage of the app either way. Now your account has been created and you're ready to go. If you have chosen to allow Signal access to your contacts, you will be greeted with a message 
letting you know if any contacts are already on signal. Let's send our first message. Click on the pencil icon in the upper right corner. You will see a few options here. You can start a group chat. You can search by phone number, which is useful if you did not give signal access to your contacts or want to search for somebody by phone number, but they are not in your contacts. We can also send a message inviting contacts to join Signal. We'll click the name of a contact to send them a message. It looks like Don Davies has found the internet. Sending messages, making video calls, and starting groups works much as expected in Signal as in any other messaging app. This makes it easy to move your communication to Signal and know that it is secure and private, but without having to learn some complicated and awkward interface. The first time you send a photo, you will receive a prompt asking to grant access to your photo library. On iOS 14 and later, you will have the option to allow only select photos, all photos, or not to allow any. We would recommend that for Signal app, it is okay to allow all photos. This is based on the security and privacy values of Signal's at the time of this video, and that it enables a more seamless messaging experience. However, for more privacy, selecting Select Photos is preferred. You can change either choice later on in your settings. Signal will also give prompts for access to your camera and microphone. These options are usually safe to select. Next, we'll look at a few of the great features that Signal offers. In this video, we will only look at the face blur and metadata removal features and hope that you explore on your own for more. If you do have questions or tips, please leave them in the comments below. There are moments that you may capture on photo where you would rather not show a person's face or other details. This could be at a rally or protest, a Selena Gomez concert, or a picture of your car where you'd rather not show your license plate. For these and many other moments, you can use face blur in Signal. First, select a photo. The first time you choose a photo, Signal will prompt that you can click the icon here to add a face blur. It will also prompt you with setting a disappearing message, but that feature will not be discussed directly in this video. You can use the toggle switch at the bottom to automatically apply the blur effect, which works best on faces. Or you can use your finger to draw on the areas of a picture you wish to obscure. Now, when you send the picture, the areas blurred will remain blurred. The next feature is metadata removal. We will discuss this topic at greater length in a future video, but for now we simply say that it is the data about the data, photo or message being sent. Oftentimes, this is just as powerful as the actual data, if not more powerful in some instances. Signal provides a mechanism in their app that removes this metadata before it leaves your device and travels to the recipient. And unlike services like Facebook, this data is destroyed. It is not added to a data set used for sale. The best part is you don't need to do anything. This happens automatically. The best security measures are those that are enabled by default. Here we show a picture that was taken on a test device with all default options left on the phone. As you can see, there is a lot of information embedded in the picture. We don't scroll all the way down, but below the final part shown here is our precise location at the time the picture is taken. This picture then gets sent through the Signal app. We'll then go back and save it to our files so we can view the metadata. Note that it is not possible to see the metadata through the iOS photo library on a mobile device, but there are other ways to view it. Switching over to the file app, we can find the photo and a long press lets us see the info. Here you see that only the bare necessary metadata remains, such as time, file size, dimensions, and type. Your private information was saved by Signal and you didn't need to do anything other than use the messaging app as you would any other service. Next, we'll look at some of the settings and offer some discussion. The first we'll look at is the ability to link devices. The Signal app can be downloaded across all devices and platforms. This feature allows you to set up your Signal account on another device 
or on your desktop or laptop and link the messages simply by scanning a QR code. You scan the QR code from your primary mobile device to the new linked device. Note that you must have the mobile account created first. At the time of this video, you cannot create an entirely new account on desktop first. Now we'll look at notifications. The options here are fairly straightforward. If you do not want to be notified when a contact joins Signal, then you can turn this off. Under the privacy settings, we have many options. You can control whether red receipts or typing indicators are displayed to contacts. Typing indicators are the flashing dots in the chat that indicate the contact is typing. If you do not want to see your calls from the Signal app appear in your device's native call log, then you can disable Show Calls in Recents. You'll still see the missed calls in your Signal app itself though. As you can see, there are several additional options available to adjust your privacy and security settings in just the way that you desire. From lock screen settings to whether you want to accept messages from people who are not in your contacts list. You can also securely delete your chat history. Under the advanced settings, you have a few options. Most notably, this is where you can adjust your PIN or delete your account. You should now have all the information you need to get started with the Signal Messaging app. At Jehu Security, we highly recommend private and secure communications. We feel that the Signal app is the ideal app for seamless communication by offering phenomenal security and privacy for all users. As a note, we are not affiliated with or endorsed by Signal. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and click the like button if you found value in it. To help others find this information more readily, consider subscribing and sharing our video for others to see. As always, stay active and stay secure.